What's going on YouTube? It's Don here from Nova Spirit and today we are going to be taking a Raspberry Pi 2 and turning it into a desktop PC and doing a quick review on the latest Raspbian image that just launched a few days ago. So let's get started. Alright guys, to get started we're going to need a couple of things which is the Raspberry image itself and a Win32 disk imager. And I'm going to leave a link in the descriptions below so you know where to grab that and you don't have to, you know, browse into my screen. Okay, um, we're going to want the latest version, which is the Raspbian Jesse. And uh, Jesse basically stands for the distribution of Debian. Uh, and the latest one is Jesse, so that's why they updated to that. And you're going to want to download zip. Then you're going to navigate to WinDisk32 Imager, Win32 Disk Imager. I always get that wrong. And download um, that software also. And that's going to be the program that will load the image into the SD card. Now I already downloaded ahead of time, this way you don't have to wait. But the first thing what you're going to have to do after you download the image is extract it to somewhere where you're going to remember. And for me I just plopped it on my desktop. Now I'm sorry that it took a little bit too late to get this video out. Uh, I was actually making this video and what ended up happening, Raspberry, Raspberry, Pi, Raspberry Pi decided to, hey, upgrade their image. So everything that I had actually became you know, old news. So I had to redo the image, reshoot everything, and uh, start everything from scratch. You also notice that uh, on my um, Chrome, on the bottom left, you see Ubuntu Linux Edison. I'm going to be doing a few more uh, new projects with the Intel Edison that just came out, and that's going to be very exciting. Um, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's really cool. Okay, now that everything's extracted, you're going to load up Win32 Disk Imager. And the F drive, that's where my SD card is located. That's it's going to be selected. You're going to look for your image that you just extracted. Open. And they kind of like hide behind there. Next, what I'm going to do is write. Uh, yes, you will lose everything on the SD card. So that's just a disclaimer. Hit yes, and it'll start writing everything. Now, if you have a, you're probably going to want a class 10 because that's the fastest speed that you could get on the um, SD cards right now. And that's what you're going to be using if you wanted to use it as a desktop environment. All right, going back to the raspberrypi.org folder while we are actually waiting for this, this 32 imager, let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, the release notes. Now, they actually did some changes. I have not even seen this image yet. Uh, I actually am recording live, and I basically live. I have not played around with this image. But according to what I read, it seems like it pre-installed a lot of the applications that I was going to have you install on my last video that I was in the middle of making. And uh, most notably is the LibreOffice, LibreOffice, I, I might be saying that wrong, and the Claw Mail. And those were the two main programs that you kind of need to work as a desktop and obviously the the internet i mean the ex the browser and as far as their browser i probably still going to change it so i'm going to show you how to download the newer browser that way you could play html5 videos off youtube and stuff like that now uh first thing they did was upgrade the browser the scratch and the sonic pi those scratch and the sonic pi is the program that you would use to interface with the programming board the gpio pins and stuff like that so that's cool that they upgraded that next thing is they actually included the application libreoffice claw mail greenfoot and blue jay now libreoffice is like uh, microsoft office suit uh the claw mail is also it's a you know a mail client I'm not exactly sure what Greenfoot is, so we're going to be checking that out. And BlueJ is actually a coding language for, I think, Java. Um, I played around with it before, but never really went into detail because I usually use Eclipse. Next thing they actually included is the menu editor, which is a great plus because to modify a menu back in the old desktop, it was annoying. Uh, LX key map, Scrot. Okay, so now I can take screenshots without having me to install the program. Cool. Tree which I really don't know why they would install tree, which is just a directory lister. I would have done like Midnight Commander instead. But I could be wrong. I could, it could be a completely different utility. And pip. Now, that's huge. Pip is actually a Python installer utility that basically helps you install Python stuff really quick. And for them to include this, this will actually shorthand everything that you're going to do with Python. 
Um, most people already who has Raspberry Pi will install pip just to make life easier. But now that they come included, you know, it, it's it, it's a good move. Uh, new GUI based Raspberry Pi configuration application. GPIO control now possible without need for sudo. Now, if you un if you played around with this and you use the GPIO pins, you're going to notice that every time you code something, you need the sudo, which was annoying. I don't do much projects with the GPIO, but it's nice that now that you don't need the uh, sudo command. Web link to Magpie Magazine included. No idea what that is yet, but we'll check that out. New taskbar plugin to eject mounted USB drives. Now, you know that that was annoying. If you ever used the Raspberry Pi, like I said before, now you could actually eject it and there's a shortcut icon. Next one is default boot into GUI. Now that's big because back then you would have to go into console, set it up, and then ask it to boot into the desktop as soon as you boot up. Now it does it automatically. And it also now includes a GUI application to do the Pi config. So we're going to be checking that out too because I have no idea how that looks like. Uh, look and feel based on GTK3 plus three default theme. Now the old one, I believe, don't quote me on this, um, was GTK plus themes. I think that's what the old um, LXDE used. Um, I'm not too sure about this. Print screen key launches Scrot and to produce screenshots. Okay, so now you hit print screen, it will produce a screenshot. Pretty cool. Common keyboard auto detect by GUI and drivers loaded accordingly. Good thing for that. Oh my God, you don't know how much... Oh man, that, that's a good plus. Every time when I used to plug in a keyboard, if it doesn't detect it or if it's the wrong region or something like that, every time when I hit the arrow key, it would like hit F10 instead of hitting up arrow or something. It was, it was annoying and they had to reconfigure everything just to get that going. But if that works out and it fixes that, man, that, that's a good step forward also. And then numerous small tricks and bug fixes. Now I read about this and they said they actually did some speed improvements and fixed a few bugs. Uh, mainly for the Raspberry Pi 2 so you should see a speed boost in the operating system I believe um, again I don't know until I start using it and Raspberry Pi you gotta keep in mind it's ARM but the Pi 2 does have a quad core and more RAM so just upgrading the Pi to Pi 2 is already a big improvement using the old image so now that they made some speed improvements that's probably going to be also a big thing too all right, I see that we're almost done with this, and um, I'm going to be plopping this right into the Raspberry Pi as soon as it's done. So I'm going to skip ahead to that part. All right, guys, and we're back. I actually am remote desktoping into my uh, Raspberry Pi because it's easier to screen capture and you could see what's going on. Now, I did not touch anything else other than just installing XRDP. So if you actually want to learn that, I'll give you a command and I'll list it in the bottom uh, in the descriptions below. Now I'm going to go to Preferences, and here's the Raspberry Pi configurations. Uh, we do want to go into here because we want to expand the file system. Now, I'm not sure if I can show you right now. Is there anything here that I can show you with? Probably not, but uh, let me go into Terminal, and I'll show you why we want to expand the file system. This is really cool. It actually boots right into it. It's pretty quick. Um, it just turned me into a liar because it took forever just to boot that up. Now I'm going to use df.h and you're going to see that I only have 570 megabytes available, use 3.1 gigs and the size is 3.9. Meanwhile, I have a 32 gigabyte SD card in here. So I'm going to expand the file system. It has been expanded, uh, not available until you reboot. Okay. Uh, change your password, obviously. So the password is going to be whatever you want. For me, I'm just going to do password and hit OK. The host name is something you could also change. I usually leave that default so I know what this host is, uh, which is a Raspberry Pi. Unless you got a few of them, you could name them Raspberry Pi-1, dash dash 2, you know, stuff like that. Uh, login as user Pi. Unless you have a different user account or you're going to change the user account, that you should leave as default. Um, boot into desktop. Awesome. Yes. Overscan. Enabled. OK. Uh, RAS track. I don't need that yet. Interface. Uh, you could enable SSH, disable the SPI, disable that, enable serial, that's fine. Performance. Now, this is where you kind of want to change anything, uh, something. Um, it's going to stock off as stock 900 megahertz, which if you actually downloaded the old version, it, um, it will automatically be 700 megahertz because the Raspberry Pi B Plus was 700 megahertz and you had to remember to change it to 900 
for the default Raspberry Pi 2 speed. And now they kept it as uh, 900 megahertz here. Now GPU memory, here's what you need to change. Because you're gonna be using this as a desktop environment, you do want more GPU memory. And I usually change this to 128 or 256, you know, and you go up accordingly, or 196 or 9, 192, I believe it was. And localization, oh my God, this was the biggest thing in Raspberry Pi. Because it's UK and I'm um, in the States, I always have to change this and sometimes I forget and it ruins everything. So I could actually set this right off from the menu. See, it goes right into Great Britain, which that's not what I want. I want uh, US. So it's going to be en.us dash, you know, you know, en underscore us dot utf8. Okay. And it's going to set the local. Oh, that's really cool to put that in there. And this GUI utility is pretty cool. Set time zone. And you get to set your time zone, which I don't see where mine should be. Oh, US. There you go. Uh, Eastern time. Okay. It's going to set that up too. That's really cool. And keyboard. See, that's what I was talking about. Back then, you would have to do like dpkg dash reconfigure space keyboard dash configurations or something like that. Anyway, enough about me talking. We do want to reboot now. All right, and we're back after the reboot. And it does come pre installed with the utilities that are good uh, Claw Mail, very lightweight mail uh, utility, mail program. And Office, it actually comes with the LibreOffice. Now, what I mean by LibreOffice is like uh, Excel is like, here, I'm going to show you a quick example. Now, from here, you're going to see, it's going to take a little bit to boot, I guess. Uh, oh, and you see the top right, it has that eject icon now. So if I stick in a USB, I could just eject it there instead of just whacking it out and potentially destroying the USB. See, this is like Excel. And it comes with this office suit, and it comes with a browser. And like I said, I don't like this. Br I, not that I don't like it. It's it's a very lightweight, but it doesn't contain all the stuff that I want. So I actually will change this to a Firefox or Ice Weasel, basically. And I'm gonna close this out because I'm not gonna be using it. Okay, I was telling you earlier that. Um, we are going to install an application now in Debian or Ubuntu. You're going to be always using this program called AppGet, and it basically reaches to that repository, finds the software, and downloads and installs it for you. And that's what makes Debian one of the greatest operating uh, Linux operating system. It's so the ease of trying to get applications is just keystrokes away. And the actual desktop utility have like software managers where you could actually go in and it's a GUI and you get to click on the application you want. It's it's really cool. Okay, to uh, get started, we're going to do sudo app get update. Now, you always want to update your repository because they're always updating software, meaning the versions are going to be different. So you want to update the list so you you know you're going to be downloading the latest package. After you down uh, after you do the update, then you can start roaming around and installing the programs. Now, I know what program I'm going to install so for me I could just type in whatever I want but for those of you who are seeking to find applications you're gonna you could find the software manager and uh, I believe there's one huh, I can't think of the name right now but it starts with an a aperture no not aperture I can't really think of it right now but synaptic yeah, that's right. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to show you where you could get that. And that's actually a, a small, lightweight version of a software manager where you go in and browse to see what you want and click on it and, and download whatever you need right through that menu. Now, the only downside to this that I really don't like is that it connects to the raspberrypi.org server and it's slow. I mean, my internet connection is way faster than that, but it's stuck at 117 kilobytes. For me to download big programs, it takes me forever. Meanwhile, on a regular Ubuntu installation, using the Ubuntu servers, it's much quicker. All right, to get back to this, now that we wasted enough time, um, I'm gonna load in one software to show you an example. And right here, um, just, looking at it 
it already shows me that they updated and made it much cleaner. It looks definitely similar to the previous version, but with all these applications that pre-installed, um, the menu editor was a big plus. The Raspberry Pi configuration GUI was awesome. Um, they're, they're moving forward. They're doing good things with this. They're actually thinking, hey, Raspberry Pi can be a desktop. That's why they're loading all these app pre-installed applications in here. Okay, now that this is done, I'm going to do sudo, which is super user, app get install ice. Now, I don't know how to spell the whole thing, and I'll just hit tab a few times. And it'll pre-fill it for me. It's auto-completion in uh, command line which is awesome, I use it all the time. Now you see how I said sudo app get install iceweasel. Iceweasel is a variation of Firefox in Linux. Um, so that's why I'm saying iceweasel slash Firefox. It's potentially the same. And after I type that in, sudo app get install iceweasel, you see it's downloading the sources right from uh, raspberry raspbian.org. And after it's downloading everything, it's gonna install it for me. And you see how it says that? adding the version user bin Firefox to firefox.real by iceweasel. It's basically Firefox. And that's how we get new applications. You just basically app get install, whatever you want. Oh, I see. So Greenfoot is a Java IDE. Okay, just same thing with BlueJ then. Okay, now that that's installed, I can go into menu, go into internet, and you see Ice Weasel, the icon shows up. And there we have it. Installing applications is easy. It's a full desktop. You could actually hook this up to HDMI and just use it like a regular computer. You and this is RDP, so it should be a little bit faster on um, actual physical connection to your TV or monitor. And let's try youtube.com slash Nova Spirit Tech. And it should go right into my channel. There you have it. Look at that. So I see that they did a lot of great improvements on the new Raspbian image and it's geared towards more GUI user friendly type setting. And to convert this now to a desktop is easier than ever. And for $35, you can't beat this. I, I mean, where are you gonna get a $35 desktop PC? You, you really can't find anything like this. So on top of that, you could plug this up into anything and actually install like remote desktop and stuff like that and remotely access this at all times. If you enjoyed watching this video, you know what to do. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for the view and remember, hack till it hurts. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe, it helps me a lot. And if you want to watch more videos like this, I'll post a link right here.